by gold needed now more than ever. Well, joining us exclusively is Texas Republican Congressman and presidential candidate Ron Paul. Congressman Paul, thank you, sir. You know, this thing occurred to me thank you. with the craziness the Federal Reserve announces last week. We're going to have three more years of zero interest rates on top of the three years we've already had. And I say to myself, that is going to destroy the dollar. And then I say to myself, we need a Ron Paul dollar. First of all, can you describe a Ron Paul dollar? Well, the dollar would be convertible into gold at a fixed rate, which would prevent the monetization of debt, which limits the size and scope of government. It, once, once we eliminate any link to gold in 1971, all you have to do is go back and look at every chart from that time, growth of government, growth of debt, and the mess that we've had. It's, it's because of the currency. So, no, it has to be linked. It was linked, uh, and that's what was the, the founders wanted. That's what's in the Constitution. And uh, this the whole idea that Federal Reserve can create money out of thin air and destroys the savings uh, of people. People, why should they save money? And it just distorts the entire market. It's price fixing at its worst. Uh, uh, they, pr they price fix every transaction because the money is one half of every transaction. And then they wonder why it doesn't work. They got away with it for a long time because we were so wealthy, but now we've consumed our wealth, we've chased our jobs overseas, and we're deeply in debt. It doesn't work anymore, and they won't budge. And nobody in Washington wants to cut spending. If you had a gold standard, you couldn't spend. You could cut spending if people would quit, but they're not going to. I don't know of anybody, me, I don't know of any candidate that's willing to cut any spending let, in real terms. Let me, uh, I, I don't disagree with you, by the way, on that last statement, but let me just go back to that. What you're saying is a Ron Paul dollar, which would be a gold-backed dollar, would not only discipline the Federal Reserve's money printing, but it would also discipline the wayward ways of the U.S. government spending. Now, how might that work? Because that is the key. Well, and this to me is one of the most important things. If you like small government, now if you like big government, if you think we can run, uh, you know, the the empire as well as the welfare state, no, you don't want a gold dollar, and that's why they got rid of the gold dollar. But if you can't print the money, then you have to tax the people, or you have to borrow in the marketplace. And what would happen is, if the government spent too much money, interest rates would rise, and it would all be the Congress's fault. Interest rates would go five, ten, fifteen, or twenty percent, and they. Would wouldn't have a Federal Reserve and say, oh, interest rates are too high. We're going to lower them artificially and send all these confused signals to the marketplace and say, oh, there's a lot of savings out there. Let's continue the boom. So, uh, no, the market would market be stopped. Also, the balance of payments would be solved. If gold left the country, you know, once the gold left the country, then there would have to be, you'd have to quit spending money. You're, you're running out of money. You'd have to lower your prices, be more competitive, and get that gold to come back. So the uh, the distortion on international markets as well as the excessive spending here at home would all be solved with a gold standard. I'm just asking you these questions because I don't think you get enough time in these debates to really walk through the significance of the Ron Paul gold-backed dollar. That's why I think it's important for you to articulate this stuff. So what you're saying is, Congressman, rates would shoot up and that would damage the economy right away and that we wouldn't live on borrowed time. We wouldn't be able to have the Fed manipulate interest rates and we would therefore pay the Piper right away. In other words, the discipline would be fast acting. Is that fair? Yeah, that, that is true. The correction would come more quickly and it would be deeper, but it would help some people. You know, if we did this and quit the spending, taxes would go down. You know, my goal would be to get the taxes very, very low, so that's not a, a, a punishment. So uh, the, the, correction, the correction would come, but you'd have to change the spending habits. And who else would benefit? The people that the Bernanke's and the Greenspans never cared about, and that's the savers. People are supposed to save and be responsible, but there's no incentive to. So savers might, you know, instead of making one or two percent to take care of themselves, they might make six or eight or ten percent being able to take care of themselves and pay their bills and, and live a, a better lifestyle. But no, what we do is we drive the interest rates down, but there are some people benefiting. The people who get the money practically for free are able to turn that around and put it a deposit at the Federal yeah. Reserve and make a point or two, and they seem to thrive over this. Have and you? yet the, the, people, the people are injured. Under this system. Have you ever talked to Bernanke or any of the Federal Reserve governors about the Ron Paul gold backed dollar? 
Well, I try to get it going, and you remember the one th conversation I had with Bernanke uh, to try to get started. I says, "It's gold money." He says, "Absolutely not. It, it's it's not money." The last uh, and Greenspan would talk to me a little bit because he knew that I knew that at one time he was a gold standard person, so he was at least polite and had a conversation. But the last one that had a serious conversation with me on monetary policy was Paul Volcker, mm. uh, and, and we didn't agree, but he seemed to be more interested in the ideas and would invite me over for breakfast and have a I have a real discussion. He was I the appreciate last, that. He, but was that the, the, he was the last of the gold guys. Volcker really was the last of the gold guys, at least in terms of the Treasury and the uh, Central Bank. Carson Paul, you're going to continue your campaign, I gather. And I want to ask you right. do you still want to give the speech at the National Convention? Do you still want to stand up and give a Ron Paul speech at the Republican National Convention in Tampa? Well, that's, that's, that's not my goal in life. My goal in life right now and political life is to get more, uh, more delegates and get maximum amount of delegates. But uh, to think that my whole target is what do I have to do to give a speech, believe me, that's uh, not real high on the agenda. But, but just it in works the last few fine, moments, fine you, you would do it. You would do it if asked, would you not? Well, it depends on what the circumstances are. You know, they have a lot of rules and regulations on what you can say and what you have to do. They're not going to give you a prime time spot if you uh, want right. to talk about the gold standard and bringing troops home. You I, know, I they're not going to be. They're not going to welcome me for there. So Congress, we'll have to see gotta, what happens. And I got to leave it there. Thank you, sir. Congressman right. Ron Paul and Very the good. Ron Paul Gold Back Dollar.